Are you guys Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Can I talk to you guys? Do you guys course, have a few minutes? Course. I just had a question for you guys. Yeah. I was looking at the word obeisance in the Bible. Are you guys familiar with that word, obeisance? Slightly, but go ahead. Like basically acknowledging one's superiority or importance. Okay. So in some places in the Bible, in some instances, like we see the word obeisance, like I'm looking at a passage right now, we see the word, because of the context, it can be translated as bowing the knee, okay. prostrating the body. What is the, um, what's the scripture you're looking at? Uh, so if you go to Matthew 8 verses 1 to 3, okay. so because of the context, it can be translated as bowing the knee, prostrating the body, or showing a great deal of respect and honor. So it's not always necessarily worship, yeah. right? Because so, obeisance, in a lot of translations, mm -hmm. a lot of versions, is translated as worship. Mm -hmm. So in Matthew 8, verses 1 to 3, it says, are you guys there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus, of course. Mm -hmm. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus put, on his, put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Mm -hmm. So here, I mean, you could see it as an act of worship. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's not the outside that God looks at. It's the heart, mm -hmm. right? It's one's heart mm -hmm. where he sees if, if it's worship or not. So in our translation, just to, to let you know, it actually says he did obeisance. Yes, to him. yes. And then it actually shows the, um, the here it says did obeisance to him or bowed down to him, honored him. Mm -hmm. People mentioned in the Hebrew scriptures also bowed down, meaning prophets, kings, and other representatives of God. So in the original Hebrew, the context is more that he, it was an act of respect of honor mm -hmm. rather than an act well, it's of Greek, worship. Yeah. The New Testament. You said Hebrew. Sorry? It's oh, Greek. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah. said in the Hebrew scriptures, it was also mentioned that same word. And yes. in that context, when there was kings, right, in the Hebrew scriptures. Yes. Uh, but yes, what you're talking about is the Greek scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway. Um, so, I think know? here in Matthew 8, yeah. uh, the leper was showing obeisance to yes. Christ. So, yes, definitely. he was submitting to, to Christ to be healed. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe it wasn't full, you know, full on worship. He yeah. showed a great deal of honor and respect, sure. right? To Definitely. be healed. Yeah. Yeah. You guys agree with that, obviously. Yeah, so you okay. recognize him as a representative of God. And that's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, now, can we look at another example of obeisance? Okay. Where's this going? <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to get to my point, <laughs> okay? okay? okay, okay. And, then, and then I want to hear your thoughts. Okay. Just exchange okay. thoughts. and. Yeah. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 9. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, verses 18 to 19. Yeah. You there? Yeah. Okay, so while he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him. I'm looking at the NKJV, okay? okay. The New King James yeah. Version, okay? Yeah. Which ours says did obey since yes, then, but yes. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. So again, here's another example, someone quote-unquote worshipping Jesus some again some versions translate as worship but again it seems as though the ruler who came to christ was just showing a great deal of yeah. uh, obeisance right okay. begging christ to raise his daughter uh, who had just died and there are more examples where we can you know see it as obeisance mm -hmm. uh, so i can agree i can agree that it's okay. not worship necessarily right in these certain passages okay now can i show you guys a clear example where jesus is worshiped and then maybe you can share your thoughts if you don't mind, yeah? Okay. Uh, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, like, without any watchtower influence, just like, let's just look at the passage honestly, you know? Okay. You know? Like, like you, you know, personally. But to what end? Like, I, I don't... Oh, just look at it, and I oh, want to okay, hear your thoughts. Sure. I want to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Revelation 5, Revelation chapter 5. Mm -hmm. um, so it's verses 8 and 14 that I want to pinpoint on, but... Do you guys mind if, if we read the first 14 chapters? Just so we can get the context? 14 chapters or 14 verses? Oh, sorry, 14 verses. verses. <laughs> I'm like, oh, ah. we're not here for a long time. No, 14 <laughs> verses. Okay. Um, yeah, because I don't, I don't want to take anything out of context. Yeah. I want it to be yeah. in context because no, I know yeah. you guys are about yeah. context, so am I. Yeah, I'm familiar with these scriptures too. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay. Uh, so Revelation 5, yeah. I'll start from verse 1. We'll just read it quickly. 
And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. You guys following so far? Okay. Verse six. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Verse 8. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Now, this is not the word proskuneo. It's not the word worship or obeisance. Mm -hmm. It just says fell down before the lamb. And the lamb is Christ, right? Right. They fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Just a few more verses. Yeah. And have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard a voice of many angels around the throne. Um, around the throne. The living creatures and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. This is to the lamb, right? Who is Christ. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne, that's Jehovah, and to the Lamb forever and ever. So they're, they're giving blessing and honor, glory and power to, to Him who sits on the throne, which is God, mm -hmm. and to the Lamb mm -hmm. forever and ever. Verse 14, one last verse. Mm -hmm. Then the four living creatures said, Amen, and the 24 elders fell down and worshipped, that's proskuneo, worshipped Him who lives forever and ever. Okay, so... The question is, who did they worship here? What's your thoughts? Just reading it carefully in context. So there's one throne in heaven. And in verse 13, it says, all of heaven and, and creation. So every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them. I heard saying blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Right. Yeah. So what's your thoughts on that? Um, well, at first glance, you, you said yourself the one on the throne is God. Yes. So they're worshiping God, but I, I don't understand. You're, you think they're worshiping Jesus here too? No, I'm asking you. I'm, I'm asking like, uh, so they're giving um, this sort of glory, this sort of honor, this sort well, of worship? Well, they both deserve the glory and the honor because God has... Ins has um, installed Jesus as king of his kingdom mm -hmm. and then eventually Jesus will hand over the kingship back to his father mm -hmm. so if it's both of them here I'm assuming I mean I this is at first glance here I'm thinking it's God but yeah why are you asking do you remember in Isaiah where it says uh, I share my glory with no one right like I am God alone yeah. and my glory I give Almighty. to no one yeah but here um, in Revelation 5 it's yeah. very clear that everyone, this is a prophecy of the future, right? Right. Uh, is not only giving glory to the Father, right. but also giving it to Christ, the same glory. There's no distinction between the worship they're giving to the one who sits on the throne and to Christ, who's the Lamb. Okay. 
Yeah. Are you catching that yeah. or? At this point, though, Jesus has already been made king. Now, right? Sorry, I didn't. In Revelation. Yeah, yeah. At yeah, this so, point. So it's a difference with the timing too of the two scriptures that you were reading. So here, yeah. he had installed his son as king. But anyway, so you're. What what is the point that you're trying oh, to? Oh, so tell me. I'm, I'm a <laughs> so I'm a Christian. Um, and uh, you know, I, I believe Christ is God. Okay. Right. You're, you think they're one and the same? No, no, not not the same person. Okay. So, two different persons. Okay. Yeah, there's a um, there's a plurality within the Godhead, okay. within Jehovah. So that's what I believe, and that's okay, right? I, I mean, I can have my own belief. For sure, yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, definitely. But. Uh, yeah. So though that's your thought that yeah. it's okay to give the same honor and glory and worship to the Lamb as it is to Jehovah, a, a creature a, a, according to you know the Watchtower, Christ is an angelic being. So is it okay he for someone to? God has given him a measure of authority as king with subjects. Yeah. So I don't know if I would say he gets the same, just taking one scripture to say that they are exactly the same because in this one scripture, the, um, the creatures in heaven on earth give him worship. I wouldn't say that that makes them equal through the whole Bible. Right, right. <laughs> well, but um, I, okay, see so I see where you Do you remember you know. in Revelation when uh, John bowed down before the angel? Yeah. What did the angel say to John? Do you guys remember? So the angel said, do not bow down before right. me. Yeah. Do not do that. I, I, I'm just like you. Yeah. Right? He, he said to John, like, do not do that right. ever. Yeah. You but know? Because that's a creature you're bowing down to. Yeah. Yes, so, but Jesus and the angels are on different levels, right? Are they? Jesus? I thought according to the Watchtower, Jesus is the Archangel Michael. The Archangel. And so what, why is, what's his distinction as the Archangel versus the other angels? Uh, I don't think... Personally, like if you're asking yeah. me, yeah. I don't think there is a distinction between angels. You seem to know exactly <laughs> how we feel about yeah. it. And you know us. We respect your opinion and you respect ours. And it's lovely to have an interchange. But Okay, before I go, yeah. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Uh, can you guys go to the last verse in Revelation 4? So the chapter before? Yeah. Revelation 4, verses 9 to yeah. 10. Um, so uh, it says, I love that scripture yeah, actually. actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Revelation 4, verses 9 to 10. Whenever the living creatures. Oh, 9 to 10. Okay, okay sorry. 11. I thought you were saying 11. Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, what, what does 11 say? You are worthy, Jehovah our God, to receive the glory and the honor and the power because you created all things and because of your will they came into existence and were created. There you go. So that, that I wasn't even going to go there, but yeah, that yeah. glory, honor, and power. Yes, belongs to but they're also giving it to the lamb in the next chapter. Okay, so that's my point. Okay, but the Bible also says honor your mother and father. Like, mm -hmm. so that doesn't mean you worship your mother and father either. No, no, right? but this Showing is honor, honor and glory. Is, right, but that's it's like not worship. Yeah, no, I get There's you. There's a distinction, right? I think it's clear in uh, yeah. in Revelation five, all of heaven, all of earth, every creature that ever existed, yeah. is giving that same worship. This is a different context. This is yeah. like. It doesn't say same. Right? I'm sorry? It didn't say the same, give them the same honor as God. It didn't say that. It said that they did show him honor. Okay, okay. let's do a thought process. So let's say I'm in heaven and, and I'm one of those pe people, okay? And I'm like giving. On the earth or the ones in heaven? Heaven, heaven. Oh, okay, you're in heaven. So I'm yeah. in heaven. I'm giving all the honor, glory, blessings, you know, uh, everything else is set there, right? To, to Jehovah. The one seated on the throne. Yes. Yeah. And it says, to the Lamb yeah. that was slain. So am I going to say, hold on, uh, you know, Christ, I, I respect you, but I'm just giving this sort of honor to, that's not what it says, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's showing to both. Them both honor because we realize that they're both, have both a of their positions. Yeah. Okay, uh, so Revelation 4, 9 to 10. Yeah. Um, I think this will hopefully make it a bit clearer. <laughs> Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. Now, in verse 14, um, in, in the next chapter, we see the same term, who lives forever and ever. Now, I know your version, the New World Order, it, it doesn't say, it doesn't have that verse, right? It doesn't have 14? 
No, no, it doesn't have... Yeah, forever and ever. The one who lives forever and ever. Okay, okay so you do have it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, so, um, so the Greek is actually who lives to the ages of the ages. So, tus eonas ton eonon, who lives to the ages of the ages. So my question is, who in Revelation said that they would live forever and ever? Do, do you guys remember who said that? You tell me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Revelation 1.18. Okay. I'm trying to wrap it up so we can okay. make the connections here. So okay. Revelation 1.18, Jesus himself says, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Yeah. Amen. And I have the keys yes. of forever Hades. Forever and ever. Yes, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Forever and ever. So that, that word, forever and ever, yeah. in Revelation 1.18, or forevermore, is tus eones ton eonan. Okay. Anyway, we totally respect your, yeah. your, your view on things. And yeah. I'm so happy to find somebody who's like has a spiritual side. Not a lot of people are that into the... Yeah, so I'm a Christian myself, obviously. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Um, I, I just don't think, uh, you know, like I said, like in certain passages, it is obeisance. But I think you're, so just before I go, how do you not see this as worship? What do you see it as? Just Sorry, obeisance? Sorry, bounced all over the place here. Which yeah. part of it? So Revelation 5, like the chapter we read. Um, how, showing respect to Jesus with his position that God gave him. Okay, so how do you make the distinction like between worship Jehovah and then respect Jesus in that passage. There are two different words. No, it's the same word. It's proskuneo. So verse 14 in Re Revelation 5. We're, we're jumping all over the place. Plus, we take the Bible as a whole, the whole Bible. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to start talking about Jesus and God being the same person, then... No, no, uh, not the same person. Two different persons. But Can we not have different opinions? Yeah, yeah, okay. we could. Oh, we're good. <laughs> oh, we could. Okay, okay. okay All good. right. Okay. 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 All right. Well, thanks that... for stopping yeah, by. That's thank great. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's okay. okay. I thought you guys were out here to ha have conversations. We are. Oh, we are. We yeah. Are. yeah. Oh, but you're pushing me away. I'm not pushing oh. you away. Am I being argumentative? <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay. I was just wanting your thoughts yeah. on the passage. Well, we gave you our thoughts. Yeah. We oh, okay, okay. We truly believe that Jesus and Jehovah. But you said it's two different words, though. It's I'm saying it's the same word. It's proskuneo. Okay. But we think that worship can like honor and glory can yeah. be given to God and Jesus just like Jesus received obeisance yeah yeah and it wasn't worship it, we, we saw earlier how in the Hebrew scriptures mm -hmm. that was also given to kings and to other prophets and other representatives of right God. but they weren't worshiping those kings no, as God weren't. so even with Jesus so yeah. in this when that word is used to the lamb yeah it's not necessarily an act of worship okay Sorry, um, I, I'll go. I, I promise I'll go. What I'm just, just, I just want you guys to get this because yeah. if I'm not getting it, you know, you can correct me. But I, I've looked into this. What I'm saying though is that word. So if we go back to Revelation five, I'm not asking you to go back. But if you want to go back, you can go back. In Revelation five, yeah. verse. Let me go back to it here. Verse fourteen. So it, it is the word proskeneo, and it means. It could mean obeisance, it could mean uh, bowing the knee, it could mean yeah, worship. It says worship. down on worship. There you go. Okay. But how do we know that it doesn't just apply to the one sitting on the throne? Because it says and like... to the lamb. So I know, it says but the elders and the other angels were yeah. the other creatures were also present. So like there was oh, more okay. than Okay, I, I think we like missed a... it. Sorry, uh, yeah. I, I have to read it again. Verse thirteen. And every creature which is in heaven, every creature, that's angels, that's the elders, every creature that is in heaven. Yeah. And on the earth. So everyone in heaven, everyone on earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them. So literally everyone that's been created. I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne. That's Jehovah, there's only one throne. And to the Lamb forever and ever. It's very clear to me. I don't know how... Yeah, that part. But yeah. then when you go to the second part, yeah. it says the four living creatures were saying, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. So how... Who lives forever and ever, right? What do you mean? Sorry. Do you have no, forever? No, this is two different sentences here. I know, verse 14. And no, See, that's what I was saying earlier. You don't have forever and ever. Okay. So when you check the Greek manuscripts, there's okay. forever and ever. Okay. That's, that's, that's the verse I was oh, getting at. Okay. And then, then my next question was, who in Revelation said he lives forever and ever? And it's Jesus in Revelation 1.18. Okay, let me just pause the video for a minute. 
I just want to point out once again, as a side note, I mean, I did bring this up to their attention, but just to reiterate, a better translation for the phrase tus aeones ton aeonon is the ages of the ages. Translating this as forever and ever comes across more as an idiom. And plus, there's no and in that phrase in the Greek. Ton means the or of the, of the ages. Not to mention that adding and ever after forever does not make eternity any longer, does it? There's only one eternity. While an age could mean a period of time, however, aeon can also mean eternity. As elsewhere in scripture, we read about this age and the one to come. Anyway, this is all just side note and unrelated. The point I was making with the JWs is that Christ says that he is alive to the ages of the ages. And this is in the context of him dying and being alive. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive to the ages of the ages. And the connection was that in Revelation chapter 5, verse 13 to 14, we see the four living creatures and the 24 elders, not to mention literally everyone else, falling down and worshipping him who lives to the ages of the ages. But you did mention before that in Isaiah, yeah. you said only God should be worshipped. In Matthew, only God should be worshipped. So like for most of the scriptures and then you're just picking one scripture I have more I just don't want to take too much of your time I have more I'm just trying to focus because if I brought like six different ones it's like we're jumping like you said if you guys had time I would I would I would I would talk to you guys for another hour yeah anyway what's your names okay Hussein okay nice to meet you okay have a great day okay take care yeah alright I mean, there's so much I can say or do when they push you away. Especially when they say, well, this is just one passage. We have to look at the entirety of Scripture. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, if you guys gave me time, we can look at other passages, but let's deal with this one passage first, right? Let's try to understand this first, and then we can look at many other passages. And uh, the word, again, is, is proskuneo in Revelation 5, verse 14. And, and it's, it's one word. It's not two different words for Jehovah and the Lamb. No, they gave worship to both. The same sort of honor and glory and blessing and worship to both the one sitting on the throne and to Christ. It's very simple. If you just look at the passage fairly for what it says, without any watchtower lens, without any indoctrination, you won't come up with any other interpretation. You can't. Now, there are other passages um, in the Bible. For example, Matthew 28, verses 9 and 10. It says, And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. This is after the resurrection. They're not just showing him honor. They're worshiping the resurrected Christ. And Jesus' response was completely okay with the disciples bowing down and worshiping him. And even in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, even the angels worship Jesus. All the angels worship the Son. Now, there is another passage I want to show them, but I couldn't. Um, I don't know if it came across on video, but... It, they kept put, they wanted me gone, right? And it's like, well, if you're making yourself public on a public sidewalk, you know, you better expect someone to come up to you and, and you know, I wasn't being critical. I was just wanting to show them that Christ is, uh, that Christ does receive the same worship. Luke 24, verses 50 to 53. And he, this is Jesus, led them out as far as Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. So they worshipped him. This is after Christ's resurrection and after the road to Emmaus uh, that they encountered Christ and they, it says they worshipped him. Now let me show one more passage. If I had more time I would have shown them this. In Matthew 4 verses 8 to 10 we, we see Satan telling Jesus to worship him. 
And it's the same Greek word. And the New World Translation has the English word worship in this verse. Proskuneo. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. So how come the word for worship here in Matthew 4 is worship and is seen and understood as worship, yet in Revelation 5 verse 14, that same word, worship, proskuneo, when it's referred to the Lamb, to Christ, it's not worship. It just, uh, there's an inconsistency there.